All right, we're back. We've got a very special edition for you. We got a guest. He's hailing all the way from Lafayette, Louisiana. He is the lead singer, songwriter with the mighty group Black Heart Saints. Please welcome Josh Ross. How are you, Josh? I'm doing good. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me today. Oh, man. Good to see you. I know, uh, you know, down south down there, Texas and Louisiana, and then, of course, Mississippi and Alabama, all the way to Georgia and Florida. It's got a rich musical heritage. You know, I, I've i interviewed all the big British rock stars, you know, from the 70s, you know, the big uh, the Zeppelins and the the Who and the Rolling Stones and the, wow. the Beatles and all, all these guys, the, the Yardbirds. And all their heroes were these Southern soul and R&B artists. Um, and it kind of makes you proud to be an American because you thought, wow, all the big bands are coming from England, you know, right in the yeah. 70s and even into the 80s. But then you realize it's a mutual admiration society. They really love the heartland of America. Tell us about you and your love for music. What, what age did you fall in love and who were some of those first artists that made you want to do this yourself? Uh, sure, man. Uh, so, you know, I come from a family of musicians. My dad was a, a old school rocker, you know, from the 70s and 80s. And, you know, they had the big hair and the all the pyrotechnics you can imagine and all that good stuff. So uh, I definitely was uh, raised the right way. Like I said, my dad would take me to uh, the bars that he played the night before uh, in his later years when I was just a kid, man. And, you know, he told me the best thing about being a musician and, and how you get started is by learning how to roll up a cable properly. <laughs> you know, when you can unload and load your gear without having any issues, well, then that's that's the first step to being a good musician right there, son. So, uh, like I said, I mean, I, I came from just rock and roll, man, and, and from Louisiana, you know, there's a good heritage of, uh, you know, blues and, and soul music that comes from, you know, the Big Easy of New Orleans. And uh, so, man, it's just been kind of something that I've been following for years and, and fell in love with. And, and the bands that my dad was kind of showing me throughout the years was, you know, Zeppelin and Black Sabbath and Aerosmith and even my brothers who, who brought me into the 90s of, of Soundgarden and Pearl Jam and Soul Tip of Pilots. All the good, good rock and roll stuff that you can imagine, man. And uh, I just fell in love with the man. And, and ever since I had the taste of being able to to get on stage and, and get that experience of uh, connecting with the crowd and, and just vibing off the, the energy and the music. And, uh, you know, it's very therapeutic, you know, to, to be able to get out there and just do what you love and, and, um, and be able to share something that is so uh, that you're so passionate about and that that people are connecting with. That That's that's a blessing that, you know, you can't even uh explain you know yes of course and you know through the years the uh the hybrid and the blending between styles you know of different kinds of rock and pop and soul and funk and and country and and all that really you know are in that melting pot that you can right. draw from and, and give people what they want and uh, i noticed that you uh, you guys did a uh, a great cover of the Billy Squire song from the seventies, late seventies, lonely is the night. Now, how, and why would you dip into that Squire catalog? What, how did that speak to you? Um, like I said, man, we, we've always, um, you know, when we started the band, we, we wanted to, we know how hard it is to get noticed in, in the industry and try to, you know, uh, make a mark and, you know, something that we kind of, you know, brought to the table was, you know, how can we write songs, but how can we also take a song that maybe is very popular that people may know and maybe give it our own little taste, our own little twist to to those 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 songs that can maybe help uh, maybe even launch our careers by getting this, you know, getting our sound out there and uh, and maybe turning people into what Black Heart Saints is doing, you know, personally. Um I mean, Billy Squires is, is one of the greats, man. I mean, from uh, my kind of lover to, you know, the stroke to, I mean, you know, you can't go wrong with some Billy Squire. We need, we need more Billy Squires, what I say, <laughs> you know? And, um, and like I said, we've taken songs that um, maybe people might not have even thought that we might do with, uh, with the Robert Palmer Addicted to Love and gave it a cool little rock and roll twist to that. Such a pop song, you know, and, and it's been doing very well um, with the streaming uh, on Spotify and stuff. So, uh, we would like to think that us taking songs and, and you know, putting our own little taste and keep it and justifying, you know, the, the original artists. Uh, we hope that we're doing that very well. And we're respecting those people and, and the fans are loving that we are doing something of that sort. So uh, that's just kind of what we, we, we've done since the beginning, man. And, and just uh, we're just going to keep riding that way and, and hoping that uh, people enjoy it. 
Yeah, I always say, you know, growing up with so many styles of music that I love, that there's really only two kinds of music. Music that moves you and music that doesn't. Right. So whatever category or some journalist wants to call it this or that, F that. You know, if you if you feel it, that's all that matters. And truth be told, Billy Squire makes his living these days off the hip hop artist sampling his music. He's like right. the most sampled rock artist out there, starting with the big beat and of course the stroke and all those songs. Um, Jay Z, Run DMC, everybody has sampled Billy Squire. It's pretty amazing that a, right. a guy like that would uh, see most of his income coming from a, a, a new genre. Absolutely, man. It's, it's a way to keep, you know, the music lives on, man. You know, it's like once you put it out there, it's, 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 uh, it's a beautiful thing to see, you know, someone take your song and kind of keep it, keep it alive. And it's a way to kind of keep yourself alive, you know, even, even after, you know, the end of, end of days and stuff. So it's, it's a beautiful thing, man. It's a beautiful thing to be able to create music and, uh, and have people connect with it and, and, you know, find some, some way of uh, living through your music. It's, it's beautiful. Yeah. Now I know the group Black Heart Saints is now uh, Austin, Texas based. People call it the live music capital of the world with all those bars on Sixth Street and all that. Um, um, how did you gravitate being a Louisiana boy over to Austin? And why is that a good place to be based for the band? Uh, like I said, I mean, it's, it's the music capital of the world, man. And, and my dad being a musician, uh, you know, he's he's had his day in, in Austin and, and would go out there and do shows and stuff. And, um, you know, being from a small town, you know, that's that was one of the things that he kind of preached to me was, you know, if you want to make a, you know, if you want to do something in in this industry, you have to get out there and, and, and go show yourself and, and prove yourself. And uh, it's going to take a lot of work. And, you know, he always talked about Austin, Texas. He's like, you know, if you want to go and find those musicians that are just as hungry and want it just as bad. And, and you know, that's going to be the place that you need to try to go. So it was something that, you know, always stuck with me. And uh, I had the opportunity to finally get out there and, and go and, and chase the dream. And, um you know, got out there and I met uh, Mark, the guitar player. And uh, after about a year of being out there, I started to play, uh, you know, acoustic gigs on Sixth Street and, and did the whole, you know, cover thing and uh, try to get my name out there. And uh, like I said, that slowly kind of helped open up the doors. And, and I got came across Mark and, uh, you know, we had the same uh, we were like minded on, on, on the style of music that we want to write. And, uh, you know, we started in 2014 and, and man, we've been just kind of hammering it out ever since. And uh, like I said, it's a great place to be. It, it's it's it definitely will put you to the test because there's so much talent out there. There's so many talented people that, you know, want to help other musicians as well. And, uh, and they, they bring you up. You know, it's 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 a good environment to be in. It's competitive, but it's a good competitive. It uh, it makes you want to be better, it makes you want to get out there and, and see what it's all about. So. The band's based out of Austin, and it's been good to kind of help us uh, use that name when we get out there on the road, you know, because it's almost like a, a, a stamp on the name of Black Heart Saints where it's like, okay, if these guys are doing well in Austin, Texas, well, we want to see what they're all about. And uh, and they take us out there, and we get to play all over the nation, um, and we're, we're thankful for that, man. It's, it's, it's awesome. Yeah, well, I know you have a new association with Cleopatra Records. Of course, uh, old friends of mine, great independent guys. Brian Pereira and Timmy Suey, because I'm great, great people over there. Um, and you're about to uh, release Human Ecstasy. Tell us about that song and why you feel that's the great lead off for uh, your association with Cleopatra. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, we've, we've, uh, we've been putting in a lot of years uh, doing everything independently, uh, me and Mark, we, um, you know, from, from, you know, top to bottom. And uh, we think that just, you know, over the years of just hard work and, and, and showing what we're able to bring to the table, uh, we got lucky to come across our, our new manager, which is John Gomez, and, and he's able to kind of connect the dots for us. Uh, with the new song, Human Ecstasy, uh, it's, it's one of the ones that, you know, we've been very fortunate to have the best experience in the studio with writing that song. Uh, we were able to bring in Gino from Filter to uh, help produce the song. And then we had uh, Ron Bumblefoot from, you know, uh, X Guns N' Roses member. Uh, to actually mix and master everything and, and really bring the song to life and uh, getting to work with professionals like that. It's, it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's so cool to see how they work and, and, and how much information they have and how much guidance they, they can lend you. And, um, and that's why we feel like this song has been, is, is going to be, you know, the best work that we've done so far. Uh, partner up with Cleopatra Records. We know that they're going to really take the song and help run with it and, and you know, get it into uh, the hands that, you know, we weren't able to get, you know, our stuff into. So it's a, it's a good team effort all around. And um, 
I think we're just we're just very fortunate to even have this experience. I mean, I know a lot of people dream of these kind of uh, situations to happen and they never get it. So we are just very fortunate to be able to do that. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, that's, you know, Human X is a cool song. And, and like I said, it's it's uh, it's out on Spotify right now and in all, you know, digital streaming platforms. And people want to check it out. Give it a listen. Let us know what you think. You know, share it with all your friends and family and all that good stuff, you know.